Hey guys, Mike here. Well, I'm in my shop at work, and this is a video that I did a while back, almost a year back in 2016, I forget what month, uh, explaining about Spence valves, and I wanted to get it open, and I couldn't get it open, so I, like, canceled the video, but I'm not going to open it this time because those bolts are beyond torqued down, and I'm just not bothering with it. I have the part that's inside there, and I'll show you in a minute. But this video is going to be explaining about a Spence valve and how they operate and work. So I have two here. That's a pilot valve. This is a Spence valve with a pilot valve, and I'm going to explain about these. Now, in my building here in New York City, we have a district steam heating system, which was placed which was installed by Carn Edison back in the late 1800s. 1880, I think, was the first uh, power plant way downtown by the Brooklyn Bridge, and it started serving steam to buildings down there. Over the years, it expanded, and what you have is a mix of buildings in the city with boilers and district steam. This uh, district steam in New York City is used for heating buildings and radiators, hot water, and the really high pressure steam is used actually for absorption chillers. So there's no electric motors and the steam turns a turbine which powers the centrifugal chiller. Uh, those are in the big commercial buildings. Also, some buildings do use um, backup turbine steam generators. So the steam does have a lot of use. Um, it does. Uh, it is very expensive, though, the way it comes in. It's metered like gas, so you do pay a monthly fee for it. Uh, it's it's expensive, though. It's expensive. Um, so, anyway, on to the Spence valve. This is a Spence valve. This is the pilot valve. These Spence valves simply reduce pressure. They're a pressure-reducing valve for steam. Now, the way these operate is... Steam comes in here, and there's diaphragms down here, which the steam gets compressed and, you know, squeezed down. So it just, it's, it, again, it's a pressure-reducing valve. So, for instance, this one was taking 100, and, now the steam here comes in between 150 and 200 pounds. So anywhere between there was taking that pressure, and on this end it was bringing it down to 38 pounds of pressure, which then went on to another Spence valve which took 38 down to 3 for the heat exchanger for our, our hot water. Now the way this works, steam comes in here. Now before this you have an actuator valve or solenoid valve. Now when there's a call for heat, the solenoid valve opens, lets steam into here. Steam first also comes into this pilot valve. This pilot valve is what regulates the pressure for the Spence here. Now, the way that works is steam comes in here, it gets regulated with, now the more you tighten these, the, I believe, the higher the pressure, the looser they are, the lower the pressure, or vice versa. But that's how you adjust it, and the spring here compresses down on some type of diaphragm in here. Then that steam pressure comes in the bottom of the Spence valve, and pushes up on those uh, diaphragms, which then compress the main steam coming in. So it's all done by steam pressure. It's all done by pressures. That's why this is the pilot valve, which controls the main Spence valve. Then on the other side, your steam comes out at the desired pressure, which in that case uh, was 30 pounds, 38 pounds. Now we have in here some diaphragms. These which is from a much bigger Spence valve. These are these diaphragms. I think these are spares. They still look okay. Yeah, these are spares. These diaphragms, and I think there's like four or five of them together, they get placed over one another inside these two parts, and there's a gasket in there as well. Um, there's another part in here. I forget what it looks like, but again, these... I mean, I could try to get these, but again, these things are impossible impossible <laughs> i tried in the vice and everything and it just it wasn't going anywhere uh now this is a simple rundown on the spence valve um i'm not going to get too detailed with them um but if i get one open i'll get more detailed this is a pilot valve that they replaced for the heat exchanger 
Same thing as that pilot valve. There was another Spence valve that this was hooked up to. Only this one's different. This has a big uh, handle up here, which you can turn on this to increase or reduce the pressure. Now, that was also part of the heat exchanger. You had 160 coming in here. You had 30 pounds here. That 30 pounds went to another Spence valve. That 30 pounds got brought down to three pounds of steam that went into the heat exchanger. And that's what this did. This part here goes inside the heat exchanger. This is like a, um, a thermometer almost. Um, yeah, it's basically a thermometer. And it goes to this. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that part works. That part I'm not exactly sure how it works. But again, something to do with temperatures and pressures. Um, now the reason this one was replaced was it was always sending steam into the heat exchanger, which the heat exchanger doesn't always need steam to be sent into it. It can go off and on, off and on, off and on. The temperature lowers, steam goes in. Temperature is good, steam shuts off. That one was always constantly sending steam through it, which will make your meter go and your steam bill will be higher. And I can hear the steam coming on now. So that's the pilot valve and that's the suspense valve that were replaced. I'm going to go into the steam room now and show you them up close and then uh, that'll be that. All right, so uh, I'm going to jump cut to the next video, guys. Hey, guys, sorry. I actually did a separate video a while back on the steam room and um, it shows all the valves and all the workings so I'm gonna upload that video separately and you can watch that for the steam room and everything this one's just gonna strictly be on the Spence valves and their operation so uh, thank you guys and uh, Mike out real quick these Spence valves do get really big this is a two inch that thing is heavy as hell it's about 75 no not 75 it's gotta be at least 60 pound valve So they do get very big.